Hello and welcome to today's AFCB TV preview show here in the Superstore at Vitality Stadium. There was no game last week but we've got two coming up in the coming days and both myself and matchday commentator Chris Temple will be going through it all ahead of time. Here's what's coming up. We'll be looking back at that 2-0 victory over West Ham United 10 days ago. We'll also be discussing the Cherries latest recruit in Chris Metham. And we'll be looking ahead to tomorrow night's game against Chelsea here at Vitality Stadium. But first, let's start 10 days ago with that 2-0 victory over West Ham. Goals from Callum Wilson and Joshua King saw the Cherries get all three points. And a new look, back five, can inspire the Cherries back to winning ways here. This fixture finished 3-3 last season with Callum Wilson's late controversial equaliser on the edge of the six-yard box. Wilson looking to break out, he's got Fraser who scoops it past his man. Can he keep that one in, Ryan Fraser? He will. He gets his head up to see who's arriving in the middle for him. Fraser continues the run, Diop slides in, catches Fraser late, runs to Callum Wilson! What a finish! Set up beautifully for the Cherries' top scorer, and he smashed it with his right foot. No chance for Amiansky. Deadlock broken eight minutes into the second half. Four with one, West Ham nil. Well, it was great work by Fraser to make up all that ground on this left-hand side. Got the cross come across the face of goal, and it, as you say, it just sat up nicely, and Callum smashed it home into the back of the net. Great work by Fraser. Another assist in the column of Ryan Fraser, another goal in the column of Callum Wilson. As it looped up, it span, it couldn't have sat up more perfectly for Callum Wilson, and he couldn't have found the corner more accurately than he did, just inside the post. Absolutely incredible, curling ball, keeping rooted to the ground, right in the top corner. And that takes Callum Wilson to ten Premier League goals for the season. It's already his best Premier League scoring season in a cherry shirt but he hits double figures. Ryan Fraser also now goes to double figures in terms of assists. It makes him the first Scotsman since Gary McAllister, Willow, to contribute 10 Premier League assists in a season. We're going back wow. 20 years or so there, are going we? back a bit. You think all the big guns are out of the way as they try and put Brooks through. There's a real chance here for a second. Brooks to King! Huge win for the Cherries. Joshua King from close range puts the game to bed. And those nervy couple of minutes of added time will no longer be nervy. It's a double for Bournemouth over West Ham this season. 2-0 they lead. Well, a big three points for the Cherries there. Extended highlights are available for free on AFCB TV. Chris, that was a much needed win, wasn't it? Much needed, absolutely. Um, what a goal from Callum. I mean, that's a, that's a, uh, that will be in the, I'm, I'm sure, the goal of the season contenders by, by the end of the season. And a sort of moment of quality that that game needed to, uh, I guess, you know, a, a moment of individual brilliance, really, from, from Callum to break the deadlock. And obviously the sigh of relief when Joshua King put the second in, um, you know, nice move down the right, um, was, yeah, was palpable around the stadium. I think Eddie's celebration at the end, you could really see um, exactly what that meant in terms of the, the, the long overdue win uh, and the, the performance as well. It was a quite an even game. Um, and both teams, you know, it was physically a tough game. Lots of uh, lots of tackles were going in, um, and two teams that I think will be very close to each other in the table come the end of the season. So yeah, nice to come. So those games can fall either way, and nice to come out on the right side of it for sure. And against Everton, the performance was very much there, but the result wasn't. So it's it's great to have that that three points. In the yeah, they, they, I think the team felt hard done by away at Everton. The conditions were horrible up there. It was a real a real sapping game as well. And bearing in mind, you think of Dan Gosling had just come back, and uh, Adam Smith obviously was was back in the team. So the positives of having them back. 
I guess the other side of it is that it was a tough game for those those guys early on in their recovery, if you like. So, uh, yeah, for, for them to be back in the mould is, is absolutely fantastic. And, yeah, the, the, a lot of times this season, Bournemouth haven't quite got what they've maybe deserved from matches and Everton away would be another one. But those are the games probably you're not expecting. You know, if you're looking at the start of the season, you'd say they're going to be the tough games to get something from. So to perform well in defeat is, is much better than going there and getting absolutely outplayed. And you mentioned that Callum Wilson goal from the West Ham game. He took it very well, didn't he? Yeah, great technique because, you know, that, as we said at the time, that could end up in the car park or it'll end up in the top corner. Um, and I'm sure in trading, a few of them do end up, you know, hitting the pavilion roof or something. Um, but for, you could see the confidence, I guess, when you're, you're in the form that Callum's been in this season. Uh, and a lot of things he is hitting are, are hitting the back of the net. Uh, it was no real surprise to see it in the top corner. Uh, yeah, and a great moment of quality. I, I still go back to the fact I can't believe Ryan Fraser didn't get an assist for that. Um, that The official Premier League rules, I think there's something about if a defender changes the path of the ball. Lots of people were tweeting me when I put it out there saying, how is that not an assist for the wee man who ran half the length of the pitch with the ball and then put a cross in that was deflected? Um, didn't get an assist for it, but in, in all but all but name, the Fraser-Wilson combination continues to, uh, continues to c contribute in every column. And of course, Joshua King, that was a big goal for him as well. He hadn't scored since November, so he's back on the score sheet. Yeah, important for him as well because you don't want all the weight on Callum in terms of the goals. Um, we've said before that Joshua King possibly hasn't quite been at his best um, this season. Um, he, he obviously deputised as the number nine, if you like, when Callum was injured. Uh, remains to be seen if Callum's fit for this game as well, which we'll come on to later on. But um, obviously, you know, Joshua King will know that people like Dominic Solanke are getting closer to, to being fit. Um, other people have proved themselves capable of playing in that number 10 role. I think Joshua King will always be, you know, pretty much a first pick because of the physicality he brings. Um, he's a completely different player in terms of that side of the game to a David Brooks or a, or a junior Stanislas or a Ryan Fraser in that role. But obviously Dominic Solanke is a bit more of the physical presence. So I think Joshua King will know he needs to sort of continue to step up to, to ward off a bit of the, the challenges, I guess, for his place. And it's worth mentioning Artur Brock as well, starting in goal last week. What did you make of his performance? I didn't think he did a lot wrong. He, it was a solid enough uh, debut from him, or I guess debut in inverted commas, a return to Premier League action after a, a long time out. I think nice reward for him as well, because actually, you know, you talk to people behind the scenes and they say he's been brilliant in terms of working, uh, waiting for his chance. Um, we spoke to him after the game, the club did as well. And, you know, you could see the beam in his face at a clean sheet, a win and just being back in the team. Um, I think he instilled a bit of confidence in the back four. Um, his distribution, you know, seems to be calm and composed. Uh, he's a very calm and composed character, um, but he's still got a rocket in him if the, the defence need it as well. He's proved himself a great shot stopper. And of course, coming up against Chelsea now, that was the team away from home at Stamford Bridge when he repelled pretty much everything they threw at him. So let's hope that's going to be a good omen for this game coming up as well. And a clean sheet against West Ham that was the first one since Brighton in the league so that will just give more confidence to the team won't it? Yeah and when you think of the new look back five if you like if you include Arta Boric and you know, you've got Adam Smith back at left back and Nathaniel Klein at right back and those two have been switching which is a nice option to have as well you know if you've got with the greatest respect to Simon Francis you're not going to see him switching to left back um, you know during a game so it's nice to have that versatility um, the opportunity to mix up I think you know obviously Klein and Smith are both right backs but are both very capable of playing left back so Adam Smith I think has added a real um, a real energy to the team. I think his particular return has been a, a real boost, um, not just going forward, but I think I spoke to Steve Cook after the game and he said that Adam Smith's, um, he came in at half time and, and had a real rallying call for the lads as someone who's only just come back. So I think he's an important character and in the absence of Simon Francis as well, he's, he's quite a big character in the, in the squad. And we spoke last week about the gap between 7th and 12th. It's only three points, but three points can go such a long way. You can climb three or four places if it goes your way. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, it's again, it's concertinaing up a little bit and the, the middle section of the table are just sneaking away from one or two of the clubs hovering above the, the bottom three, if you like. So, um, yeah, when you look at the games coming up again, though, it, it's amazing to think that all of the big six are coming up again or a lot of the big six are, are coming up again. So that, again, l makes those three points against West Ham look really important. Absolutely. Well, since we last spoke, the Cherries have made a new signing and it was Chris Meppham who arrived here at Vitality Stadium. Let's take a look at what he had to say to AFC BTV. So we've had the names Chris Meppham and Bournemouth close together for a long time and finally they're now together and you, you sign on the dotted line. How does it feel to be here? Yeah, I'm delighted to be here. Like you said, it has taken a long time to get a signature on the dotted line, but like I said, it's been worth the wait and... For me, I'm delighted to be here and I can't wait to start um, training tomorrow with the boys and seeing all new faces. And of course, from our perspective as fans and working at the club, we, we see the link and we're sort of hoping it's going to happen. What's it like as, from the players' perspective, potentially moving or maybe not? Yeah, it's hard. It's been a lot of back and forth between the two clubs and um, obviously two windows now. Bournemouth have tried to come in for me and 
and Brentford weren't really in the position to let me go and this time it seems like it was more likely to happen than not. Um, but like I said, I didn't want to get ahead of myself until it finally happened and I got a phone call from my agents uh, y yesterday sort of telling me that the medical was going to be today and hopefully if I pass the medical then I'll sign, sign on the paper and that's what's happened. So like I said, I'm really, really pleased that it's finally happened. And there's other clubs who've had their names mentioned alongside yours. Was Bournemouth the only, the only place you ever wanted to come? Yeah, genuinely. Um, I think they was there the first window. Um, so after I played, I think, eight or nine games for Brentford, they was the team that was linked to me. And I think because they were the first team and there's a lot to like about the club, obviously, Eddie Howe's a great manager and what he's done here is massive. Um, so to be working under him um, is going to be really good. And yeah, I like the sort of family feel to the club um, and yeah like I said after they came in the first time and then obviously shown interest last time they've been very persistent with it and for me I can take a lot away from that and it sort of fills me with confidence that they feel like I'm the right player for the football club. Well that was Chris Mepham after signing for the club this time last week. Chris it's been no secret that the club have been after his signature for a while so it's great to have that one over the line isn't it? Yeah I think Eddie's been a long time admirer um, you know just I guess until it's absolutely over the line even if your favourites to sign him there's always a chance that another club could come in at the 11th hour so nice to get him over the line a bit like you know you look at other signings uh, David Brooks and the, the Dominic Solankis and people similar age similar pedigree in terms of British um, he's obviously a Welsh international teammate of, of David Brooks as well um, hasn't played since before Christmas has had a little bit of a niggle um, Eddie said at the moment in terms of getting him up to match speed it's not just about um, picking up his physical fitness but also getting up to how Bournemouth are, uh, want to play and the level he needs to be a part of this team so I'm not sure it, how immediately we'll see him of course centre back I would guess it's probably about the most solid pair of uh, individuals at the moment in the team in terms of first names on the team sheet, Cook and Ake. So, um, yeah, it's, it's great to have an option, realistic cover as well. With all due respect to Jack Simpson, it's somebody coming in who has been playing regularly at championship level. So, yeah, he, he's a right-sided centre-half. Um, so, I guess with Jack Simpson as well, you've now got a, a cover in each of each side of the centre-half duos. Um, I think it probably spells the end for Tyro Mings um, in terms of he looks likely to head out the door maybe maybe in the next couple of days. We'll wait and see on that one. But, yeah, no, a real, a real quality signing. And, again, £12 million. Pounds, it, these days, fees are inflated. Of course they are. But... I, I, I trust Eddie's judgment with these sort of players. We've seen, you know, Lewis Cook's worked out well. David Brooks has worked out very well. So I think Chris Meppham's another one of those who, you know, if he can get in the team, we'll, we'll probably see him sooner rather than later. And as you say, he hasn't played since before Christmas, but 26 appearances for, for Brentford in his country this season. So he's really got that match sharpness kind yeah, of there, hasn't he? Yeah, let's not underestimate how good a league the championship is. I mean, you know, it's, there's not a, not a huge gap between the, the top of the end of the championship these days. Um, Brentford, of course, are, I guess, there's similarities to Bournemouth and that they're by no means the biggest club in the championship. You know, so Chris Meppham, I guess for him, it's it's probably, of course, going to the Premier League is a daunting step, but it's probably quite a good transition. That this club is, of course, it's, it's bigger than Brentford in, in a lot of respects, um, and the, the standard he's playing is going to be bigger and more intense. But it's probably quite a nice transition geographically. It's not too far. You know, he's a West London boy, so um, to to uproot your life down to the coast is not too bad, rather than ending up in I don't know Newcastle or somewhere. Um, so yeah, no, really encouraging signing, and hopefully, he, he, by all accounts, he's settled in well with the the lads already, and he's He's making his presence known. So, um, yeah, look, we're excited to see what he can bring on the pitch. And you said about that transition. He obviously knows David Bricks from, from Wales, so that will give him confidence coming into the new setup that he already knows someone. Yeah, I think any time you go somewhere, it doesn't matter what walk of life you're in. If you go somewhere new and you know somebody there already, then that's got to help. Um, I'm, I'm sure David, I think there was some communication between the two before the uh, the signing was made about what it was like here. And David Brooks had some favourable things to say, which you'd hope he would have. So, uh, yeah, so maybe that, you know, a little nudge across the line in terms of, uh, I guess, the final seal of approval that he was he was coming to the right place. And, um, but, you know, it, 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 listen to his early comments about the training. I think that's going to be uh, something that he's going to enjoy as well. So, uh, yeah, having a, having a mate in the camp is, is always useful. And for Chris Meppham, he can obviously see David Brooks. He's come here in the summer and he's had a brilliant six months. So for him, that must have been such a big factor in yeah, terms I think, of coming here. Yeah, I think you, he'll see what Eddie Howe's done for players. He'll see what Eddie Howe's done for you know for Lewis Cook, who's ended up in the England squad, albeit you know hopefully he'll get back there pretty soon. Um, David Brooks, Ryan Fraser, I mean, how's he developed since even since his loan spell in the Championship at Ipswich as well? So, um, and every other player that came here in their early 20s is, is pretty much, most of them have, have proved to be success stories. So, yeah, for him, I think... He could, he could probably have gone elsewhere and, and not been, you know, right in the mix, maybe a fringe player. But that's not really 
particularly useful for somebody. If you're going to make the move to the, the Premier League, you've got to have a realistic chance of playing. We might not, we probably won't see him week in, week out because the centre half pair, as I say, unless anything happens to them, touch wood, it won't, um, then you know that they're going to be a difficult pair to oust. Um, and of course, cup competitions are no longer a factor this season. So, but it does give you know the option of playing three at the back. You, all of a sudden, you've got a very live third centre half option uh, to play on the right. So, yeah. The, who knows when, when, exactly when we'll see him, but uh, for him, hopefully a good move and will we'll blossom even further. And as you say, that centre-back pairing is so so tight at the moment, but it will create some healthy competition for them, won't it? Oh, you always need competition in, in every spot in the squad. Um, it'll, it'll drive people on. Um, and just, again, the, the, the sort of mental side of having extra bodies to call on, all of a sudden you're not looking around saying, God, Zoe's going to have to play this week, you know, she's going to have to bring her boots because there's nobody else fit. Um, I mean, that really would be scraping the barrel, by the way. Um, but, you know, it's to have people like Adam Smith all of a sudden back, to have Dan Gosling back, to, to have some options in centre midfield as well, rather than having to play whoever happens to be fit. So, um, yeah, again, touch wood, nothing happens to Cook or Ake, but it's great to have um, those extra bodies. And when you look at the bench as well, if you need to change something, you look at the bench, all of a sudden you've got a little bit more strength there as well. Definitely another really good signing for the Cherries. Well, next up here at Vitality Stadium is a visit of Chelsea tomorrow night. This time last year, it was quite an evening at Stamford Bridge, so let's remind ourselves of what happened. Come on, boys. Come on. We'll ask Eddie Howe about transfers as well. There'll still be an hour of the deadline left when we speak to him. And the Cherries put Callum Wilson in! And Callum Wilson has scored! Bournemouth on the counter-attack, Fred straight through the middle. And what is it about the shed end at Stamford Bridge? Glenn Murray scored there, Dan Gosling scored there, and now Callum Wilson in the very same net sends the Cherries fans who've made the trip to West London wild once more, five minutes into the second half. Champions Chelsea nil, Cherries one. That's very intricate, they've somehow worked it beautifully, and Wilson back to Stanislas, this is fantastic stuff, could Stanislas get it? Yes, he can! What a fantastic goal! And Bournemouth lead at Chelsea by two goals to nil! We've played 21 minutes of the second half here, 2-0, corner Bournemouth, in it comes towards Ake, Daniels with a chance, oh, that was a good opportunity, comes back to Stanislas, time to shoot, Stanislas there, deflected in, and it's Nathan Ake, and it is three at Stamford Bridge, and the former Chelsea man, Nathan Ake, has no shame in celebrating against his former club, and why wouldn't you, when your side have just taken a 3-0 lead against the defending champions, Well, what a win that was. Goals from Callum Wilson, Junior Stanislas and Nathan Ake securing a memorable victory at Stamford Bridge. Chris, that, that's going to take some topping, isn't it? Certainly. I can't believe it was only a year ago, by the way. It seems like so much has happened since then. But yeah, that, that still goes down for me as the, the greatest uh, win in the club's history, winning at the then champions. Um, yeah, absolutely huge. Uh, and of course, let's not forget, even more recently, just before Christmas, Cherries went there and, and obviously lost one in the League Cup and kept them out till the 84th minute, even in the league earlier in the season, kept them out till late in the game as well. So, uh, yeah, Bournemouth have, and Chelsea have had some competitive games. Um, last season was only 1-0 here in the, the Premier League as well. So, yeah, even though Chelsea often have a lot of the ball, um, Bournemouth have defended very well against them. But just going back to that 3-0, that I mean... It was a, I think we've said it before, it was a pinch yourself moment when you, when, particularly when the third one went in, because even at 2-0 you're thinking, OK, well, they only need one back and then it might be slight panic stations. But as soon as the third one goes in, it, it's good night. Um, and just, you know, as, as far as Cherry's fans who were there that night, will they'll probably struggle to find a better night than that one at that time. Um, I'm sure, you know, if Cherry's went to Man City and won, then it would maybe surpass it. But as things stand at the moment, that's got to be right up there. And hopefully... Yeah, a similar performance would uh, would be very nice this time round. And of course, as you say, the two games this season against Chelsea, they've been so tight up until 70 minutes earlier in the season. And then in the in the cup, it took Eden Hazard to come on and score a deflected goal. So there's plenty to be positive about. Yeah, and it, in, you know, in those games as well, I think Nathan Ake had a great chance in one of the games when it was, <coughs> excuse me, when it was nil-nil. Um, so again, against the big teams, and we're going to see that a lot in the, the next six games with, with four of the big teams coming up, it's, it's got to be about taking your chances. You know, we've seen it this season when Bournemouth haven't taken their chances, particularly against the big teams, and it does come back to haunt you. So hopefully now, almost drawing a line on those games against the big six earlier in the season, some different bodies, different personnel around, the spirit's a bit better. 
Um, hopefully now, a bit more confidence. Callum Wilson firing still. Um, you know, the opportunities when they come along, hopefully, will, will be taken. And it's worth mentioning that since that West Ham game, Chelsea have obviously had Spurs in the, in the League Cup and they've had another game against Sheffield Wednesday in the FA Cup. So their, their squad could be quite fatigued going into the game. Yeah, they, they obviously rotated a bit for the, the Cup match. Um, Eden Hazard obviously didn't play. Um, he's the one that I'd love to see rested uh, for the League game, but that's obviously not going to happen. Uh, they had a funny week, Chelsea, because they, they played pretty badly at Arsenal and lost in that game. Um, and obviously Arsenal then got turned over by United at home. So everybody's sort of beaten everybody in that little circle but then as you say two cup games and two decent wins for them which has just steadied the ship a little bit you know Sarri is still seems to be under pressure because they're so far off the the top pair if you like and um, what is it 13 points behind Liverpool at the moment so uh, yeah it's people will, will say that Sarri's uh, you know up in the betting as the next Premier League manager to go which when you're fourth in the table seems a bit harsh but those are the standards at the minute at the top of the table they've obviously bought in Higuain um, which I'm sure that, that signing will have settled a few Cherries fans down who uh, thought that Callum Wilson might be heading there. Obviously, there's still two days or whatever it is of the window left. So until the, uh, the deadline has passed and Callum Wilson is still locked in a cupboard somewhere here, um, then they'll probably never quite relax. But I think when a club have been linked with your main striker and they sign a striker from somewhere else, that will uh, always, be, always be quite nice. And um, we men mentioned Hazard there as well as Higuain. They've got some real stars to look out for tomorrow night, don't they? Yeah, I mean, they, they keep coming, don't they? I mean, Higuain, hopefully, he's still, you know, it's, it'll be his first Premier League game. Um, so hopefully, he's still settling in. He, he, you know, he didn't have a, a whole lot of chances against Sheffield Wednesday, but they didn't really need him to have a lot of chances. It was probably quite a nice game for him to, to sort of uh, take his first steps into English football. Of course, it should be, shouldn't be forgotten, he actually played here for Real Madrid in the, the famous friendly um, a few seasons back and actually scored within a couple of minutes of coming on. So uh, his, his one previous visit to the Vitality Stadium has been a scoring one. I think he was probably a slightly different player. He was probably slightly more at the peak of his powers then. I'm not saying he's on the wane, by the way, because if he scores tomorrow night, everyone will go, you said he was gone. But he's, um, yeah, obviously he's, he's been out on loan from Juventus to Milan and now he's, he's gone to Chelsea. Um, and they have struggled for goals. They have struggled for an out-and-out -out number nine. Eden Hazard's been playing there, which is not his favourite position. Um, they are the lowest away scorers, Chelsea, of the big six. Uh, they've only scored 19 goals this season. I say only, that's quite a few more than the Cherries have scored away. But um, yeah, in terms of firepower, they have been a little bit short. So they'll be hoping he's the answer for them. And in terms of our team, you, Eddie House just said in his pre-match press conference that Callum Wilson could potentially be a doubt. That would be a big miss if he's not going to play, wouldn't it? It would. Um, he had a bit of a knee injury against uh, against West Ham, which uh, when, when he came off, people probably thought he was, you know, it had been a bit of a risk to playing with his hamstring issue, issue that he'd had. But um, he has had a knee injury knocking around, so we'll wait and see how how uh, much that impacts him. Hopefully, the, the 11 days since the West Ham game will be useful by the time the match comes around. Um, Dominic Solanke, I think, is getting closer. Um, uh, he's he, he obviously had a early February sort of date put on his involvement when he first signed. Um, but I, I gather he's getting a bit closer. Whether tomorrow night is a bit soon, we'll wait and see. But there's obviously some, some big games coming up, including uh, in his old place, Liverpool. I'm not actually sure whether he's allowed to play against Liverpool. He's a permanent signing, so I'm pretty sure he probably is. Um, whether Nathaniel Klein can, I'm not sure. But anyway, we'll get to that when we get to Liverpool. But in terms of the striking options, yeah, be a massive boost for if Callum was fit. Um, I think we saw in the, uh, the game that he didn't play um, that they missed him. So... Uh, yeah, you always want your top score fit, yeah, for sure. Well, it's going to be a very exciting game here tomorrow night. If you are coming, we look forward to seeing you here. But if not, make sure you keep an eye across all of our social media channels and our website for the latest updates. Thanks for joining us.